Hey team, last time I walked you through building a coronavirus map using real-time data. We used the novel COVID API to request that data and apply it to our map. This time we're going to reach out to a different endpoint from the novel COVID API and apply it to our map as statistics. I'm Colby Fayok, and if this is your first time here and want to learn more about developer tech, make sure you subscribe for future updates. In the last walkthrough, we applied these markers to the map for each country, which has statistics for each country. Now we're going to take it a step further like my demo app here and actually apply these statistical dashboard pieces to our app. So the first thing we're going to do is create a new hook using this request. That's just going to make it a little bit more reusable so that we can use it for both endpoints. But to do that, let's create a new file in our hooks called useTracker.js. And we're going to also export that. Then let's define our hook. Export that as well. So the first thing we're going to add is a few constant variables and also our imports. So we're going to import use effect, use a state, which we're going to use, as well as our Axios request library. We're setting an API host, which is that endpoint. Then a few endpoints, which we have all, which is what we're going to use today, and countries, which we're already using. Lastly, we have default state, which is basically just going to define the default data and the ready state of the request. Next, let's actually set up some states. So we're going to have our tracker state with the default object and an update tracker to be able to update our state. Next, we're going to add a new function. It's called fetch tracker. What this is going to let us do is we're going to find a route given the argument we'll set up in a second. If it doesn't find that route, we're going to default to one that we set above. We're going to try to actually make that request, but set a loading state. If it fails, we're going to set an error state. And then finally, we're going to try to take the response if it's successful and update our state with that data. For our arguments, we want to set API and we're going to default to all, which is just our way of creating which endpoint we want to use from here. To actually make the request, we're going to use a use effect hook and trigger the fetch tracker request. And if the API changes, that means we can re-request that fetch hook. Finally, we're going to return both the fetch tracker function. That way we can trigger a manual update if we would like and the tracker state, which includes our data. Now that we have our hook, let's actually use it. So let's go back to our index page and we can import that hook it's tracker from hooks since we exported it in our hooks index file. Next, we're going to add an instance of it where we're going to request our country's data. And since we're doing that, we can now replace our other request. So let's say this is as countries. We're going to check if the countries array has any data, remove the original request, change the has data to has countries, and replace our data map with our countries. And once we have that set up, let's just add a console log to make sure that it's working. And when we look back at our page, we can see our countries array. So let's now add a second request. Let's get rid of the console log. We're going to use all endpoints. Let's rename this to stats and console log this out. When we refresh the page, we can see our stats with all the different statistics we want. So to use our stats, the way that I'm going to have this set up is I'm going to create a new array called dashboard stats. What we're going to use this for is to loop through and create our UI. I'm going to paste in some of these stats that I'm going to use, but you can find them in the GitHub if you want to paste the same thing. But what we're going to do is we're going to set up a bunch of objects. We're going to have a primary and secondary key. That way we can show our statistics visually, but similarly group them. And we're going to use our stats and information throughout the array. Side note, if you're not familiar with the question mark period syntax, it's basically saying if this exists, then we'll allow you to chain. It's called optional chaining. Next, we're going to create a new div that we're going to wrap our map in called tracker. This is just going to make it easier for us to style everything the way we want. Then I'm going to add a new section called tracker stats. What we're doing here is creating an unordered list. Then we're going to loop through our dashboard stats and create a list element for each one. That way we can separate our primary, our secondary, and actually style these things with headers. And if we save that and look at our map, we can now see all of our stats logged out. But that's looking a little bland. How can we actually style it up a little bit? In my style sheets, I'm going to create a new component file. Let's call it tracker.scss. And we want to make sure that we import it into our components index tracker. I'm going to paste in a few styles. That way we can set our different stats and our stat, our primary versus our secondary the way we want. And if we look back at our dashboard, it's looking definitely a little bit nicer. If you notice though, these numbers are not super human readable. I mean, we can probably make sense of what they are, but usually we see commas to make it a little easier to read. So to fix this, we're going to open up our util file and we're going to add a new function. We're going to call it commify. What we're basically going to do is take a value, turn it into a string. We're going to split it and reverse it. This just makes it easier for us to add the commons for every three places. And inside that, we have a reduce function, which we're going to actually add those commas to our strings. Once that's done, we're going to split it again, reverse it, 
and join it back up and finally return our string with the commas. So now that we have that function, let's actually use it. So let's import commify from lib till then in our stats area, we're going to see if stats exists. And if it exists, we're going to commify that value. And if it doesn't exist, let's just return a dash so it doesn't return undefined. And using some shortcuts, I'm going to do that for each one. And if we save and reload the page, we can now see we have our commas. Finally, to let anybody know who's using this, that this is actually up to date data, let's add a date to it. Luckily, our stats data makes this available. So at the bottom of our tracker, let's add a new div called tracker last updated, where we're going to add our last updated value and then the value itself. And if you reload the page, we can see last updated, but that's not really human readable either, is it? So we're going to open back up our util and add another function. This time it's going to be called friendly date. And what's it going to do is actually create a new international date time format, which will just make it easier for us to style. And then we can pass in our options, which will format that date. Then next to commify, let's import that in. So if stats exist, we're going to put our value wrapped in friendly date. Otherwise, we're going to just do a dash again. And after reloading, that's much more easy to read. But this still doesn't really fit into the rest of our page, so let's style a little bit. Let's open back up our tracker SCSS file. We're going to paste these styles, which we're going to set the background color to the same. Make it color white. Style the paragraph a little bit. Hit save. And our last update, it looks like it fits in with the rest of the dashboard. And with that, we now added dashboard stats to our map. Now, if you want to take this further, you can apply our human readable format to our different pop-ups. Another thing you can do is now that we have our fetch tracker function being exported, such as this one, we can do fetch tracker countries, and then we can set up a set timer using JavaScript and pull for new changes every so often. And if you followed along, you should now have stats added to your dashboard. Just as a reminder, even though the novel COVID API should be accurate, this is just for demonstration purposes. Please make sure you're staying safe and up to date with the accurate information. If you're interested in more mapping stuff, check out the links below in the description. And if you like this video, hit thumbs up and subscribe for future updates. Thanks for watching.